gives me a great pleasure to uh, welcome you all here. We are here for a lecture by His Excellency on the topic of Indo-Afghan relations, a perspective on political, economical and security situation in Afghanistan. Please first allow me to thank the Center, the Pune International Center for inviting me to have a dialogue with you today. And because I also want to restrict myself to the paper because I'm going to discuss political, economic, and security situations. So I would go, you know, sequence-wise from political to security to economics. And then I would have more interest in the Q&A, which will give us, you know, a uh, floor to discuss further, uh, not be so much restricted to, to uh, the issues that, that I'm supposed to be talking. And then I do look forward, as I said, this is my second visit, to many more visits to Pune in the future and maintaining a regular, concert, uh, regular contact and work relationship with the Pune International Center. This will not be my last visit. This is going to be uh, simply uh, a visit to making the foundation as to how more we should be doing in the future. The Indo-Afghan relations are multidimensional, rooted, as I said earlier, in centuries of shared history, civilization, and shared culture and traditional commonalities. The last decade of Indo-Afghan relationship is only a continuation of our centuries-old ties, ties that have been tested time and again, and proven to be solid as rock, deep as ocean. Even though our governments naturally understood the depth of our ties and capitalized on them to work with one another on the reconstruction and stabilization of Afghanistan, we took another joint effort to move forward to formalize our understanding of the Indo-Afghan shared destiny. And that was, in October 2011, our two governments signed the Afghanistan-India Strategic Partnership Agreement, as you all know. The very first agreement we ever have signed with any of our near and far and extended neighbors in the region. That was the first agreement and in fact, that, that is being used now as the basis for our external relationship around the world. The people of Afghanistan overwhelmingly endorsed this historic agreement. Encompassing comprehensive cooperation between our two nations, more specifically, the agreement provides for security and defense, political, socio-economic, and cultural cooperation between Afghanistan and India along with a relevant mechanism for implementation. Ladies and gentlemen, the overarching mechanism of implementing the agreement is the Council of Partnership, chaired by our two foreign ministers, so that you know as to how this partnership agreement works. We have a mechanism how we implement specific commitments to each other, as I mentioned earlier. This Partnership Council met last year in New Delhi. As we speak, we are now working on forming joint working groups, along with the sector that I just mentioned, to set our shared priorities, because every time priorities change, based on the objectives of the agreement. This effort is aimed at building upon the $2 billion investment <coughs> or assistance that India has so generously provided Afghanistan with in the last 12 years. With the support of India and international community, we have made significant progress in the last progress in the area of political development. So I'm coming now to the political part, then I will move to the economic and, and to the security later. Over the past decade, we have systematically built or rebuilt the central and local institutions of the state. Our state institutions have increasingly gained the capacity to deliver basic services to our people across the country. India has begun, has been, an integral part of this journey of the ongoing success and has built the Parliament of Afghanistan, a national project of immense significance and a sign of India's firm commitment to institutionalization of democracy and peace in our country. In the area of economic growth, India is leading the implementation of two regional confidence building measures, we call them CBMs, to further expand regional commerce and trade with Afghanistan as well as promoting and facilitating cross-border 
regional investment in Afghanistan. This vital economic effort by India stems from our shared interest and result-oriented economic cooperation towards an integrated region where everyone would prosper. Moreover, India has made significant contribution to the construction or reconstruction of Afghanistan's infrastructure, which has boosted our economic growth. We are thankful to India for building the Zaranj Dilaram Road. That's a very important strategic road you may have heard from the new media and the, and the press. Connecting Afghanistan internally and with Iran's Chabahar port. That's a, a, an alternative to the current connectivity, giving us an alternative to, route to sea for easy and unhindered movement of goods between the two of us. As a result of the combined assistance of international community, including that of India, the World Bank recently reported that our real GDP growth rose from 7.3% to an estimated 118 in 2012, while inflation dropped to 6.4%. And we're confident that India's $11 billion investment in the mineral sector of Afghanistan would enable, further enable us to grow a productive economy, <coughs> slowly helping us achieve economic self-reliance in the years to come beyond 2014, where we should be taking more of our own responsibility in our hands. It is worth mentioning that there are numerous investment opportunities in every sector in Afghanistan. Last June, at Delhi Investment Summit on Afghanistan, our Minister of Commerce and Industries presented to potential investors a detailed list of investment opportunities in Afghanistan, which is available online. At the summit, we informed some 320 participating business representatives of 25 different markets for investment in the following sectors. Energy, minerals, transport, agriculture, small and medium-sized industries, ICTs, finance, health services, and construction. With the exception of few first movers in each of these sectors and their, and their related markets, most of our markets remain underinvested. The government of Afghanistan, in partnership with our allies, frequently encourages regional and international investors to visit Afghanistan and see for themselves the countless highly profitable, profitable investment opportunities in the country. I'm working right now on a, on a visit from, from India. I mentioned earlier that I had a meeting, very productive meeting with the Commerce Minister, Anand Sharma, uh, last week, based on our uh, recent visit to Mumbai, where the President had a, had a, had a chat with business uh, community in, in, in Mumbai, to take an Indian, Indian business delegation to Kabul where you will see for yourself as to what are those opportunities and how you can invest. You remember meeting with a group of business leaders in Mumbai, the president even promised to roll out a red carpet, which is not to anyone end but to India, for major Indian firms, if they made a move to enter Afghanistan's world markets. And he also made a remark that, hurry up, don't let the carpet to, to get dusty. The dusty mean would, that you will have others move in before you. And this is an opportunity that we would like to give that first to India, then to others. In the area of security and defense, this is the other topic of our theme today, we have an expanding relationship with India. India is firmly committed to Afghanistan's long-term stabilization well beyond 2014. Our shared desire to expand bilateral security and defense cooperation stems from the prevalent threat of terrorism in the region. We need to expand our security and defense cooperation and hold strategic consultation. As previously mentioned, how important it is that the two countries now strategic steps because of the situation that we're in and moving, which is to reach 2014 and then beyond 2014, and hold strategic consultation against any impending offensive conventional or unconventional threat to our two countries' national security interests. The Afghanistan-India partnership 
agreement provides for such proactive security and defense cooperation between our two countries. So we are in line with the partnership agreement, which allows the two countries to cooperate. And we stand ready as a, as a country to do our part in partnering with India to ensure a more stable and peaceful India and the region. And where zero-sum calculations, as we see unfortunately now, are permanently replaced by win-win cooperation in the region. Ladies and gentlemen, in the, area of so in the area of social development and cultural cooperation, Afghanistan has made notable progress. And India has played a seminal role in these two important sectors in the last 12 years. More than 6,000 students are busy studying across India. As I said earlier, one third of those students are in Pune. And thanks to India's 500 annual scholarships that annually is provided to us, the expertise and the skills developed through this partnership with India has already helped fill many capacity ga gaps across the public and private sectors in Afghanistan. We have benefited from India's contribution to the health care sector. That's another area that I just mentioned earlier. This includes medical services and equipment through the reconstruction of Indira Gandhi Institute of Child Health in Kabul, as well as the provision of free medical consultation and services to over 30,000 Afghans monthly through Indian medical missions in five major cities. I can confidently say that the level of people-to-people -people contacts between Afghanistan and India is unprecedented. Aside from thousands of Afghan students, stu students studying in India, nearly 1,000 Afghans daily visit India. And that is an exemplary movement of people to people between the two of us. We have no any such a, such a huge traffic, in, especially in terms of uh, flights, with any other country in the region. On India, five flights every day moving back and forth. And most visiting Afghans are patient, unfortunately seeking medical treatment at the Indian private hospitals. This means that the stability in Afghanistan with assistance of India and international community has paid off in various ways. In our patients being treated at home or India. In our two countries ties further growing. And in the financial ability of our people directly contributing back to India's growing economy. And I had a calculation at some point that daily we're spending 400,000 US dollars. If you look at the 1,000 people going back and forth, and this is a payback. A payback. Indeed, this is the kind of win-win relationship <coughs> Afghanistan seeks with every one of our near and extended neighbor. And we're thankful to India for supporting this noble effort without, without prejudice across our much promising region. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude with a caution, however. Afghanistan gains of the past 12 years in the sectors which I discussed remain fragile. Above all else, the consolidation of our shared gains require regional leadership and ownership. And India is best positioned to work with us and our common allies to lead the stabilization and sustainable development of Afghanistan in the year following the withdrawal of international troops from Afghanistan. At the same time, we welcome increased regional dialogue among India, China, and Russia, each with an interest to see Afghanistan stabilize so that the region's agenda of economic cooperation can be fully realized. With that, I thank you and look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so very much for coming here.